friends. Welcome to today's video. Today I am creating this makeup look and I have to say I really love the way that it turned out. I kind of sat down and just used one of my go-to palettes which is the Gen Nude palette uh, by Bare Minerals in the shade Neutral. It's been a while since I picked this one up even though I rave about it and talk about it all the time as being one of my favorites. I hadn't used it in a while and I love this look. I mean I know I've created this probably in the past in other videos but gosh I love it. <laughs> it's neutral. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on um, foundation. I'm going to give you some tricks on eyeshadow application and then stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to talk to you about how you can kind of tweak this look down if you want something a little bit more subtle. If you feel like this is a little too glam or a little too much for your liking, there are two things that you can eliminate from this look that will save you time and also take it down a notch or two. So stick around until the end. Um, also, I want to let you guys know that our BK Beauty Mother's Day sale is still happening uh, until Sunday, Mother's Day. Um, it's 20% off. Some bundles are actually almost 30% off the full price. Uh, we've never had a sale like this before. I'll have all the information down below. We are currently sold out of the 101 brush and I talk a little bit about in the video, but um, we have decided to go ahead and honor that 20% off for anybody that wants to order the 101. Basically, we have a waiting list uh, that you can sign up for on the 101 product page on the website. So you sign up for that waiting list. As long as you're signed up for that waiting list before the end of the promotion on Sunday, when we do restock that brush, which will be June, you will get an email with a one-time code that you can use on any item on the website um, that includes the 101. Okay. So um, I know that's a lot of information. More details will be in the description box, but we wanted to offer that 20% um, to you guys uh, even later if we, since we don't have the 101 in stock. Enough rambling. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So first I'm going to start with priming my skin and today I'm going to be using the Unseen Sunscreen by Supergoop. Um, I'm using this because I am going to be outside today and this does have an SPF of 40 and since I just did that VI peel last week, I, I mean I always protect my skin obviously when I go out in the sun but I'm like really conscious of it now making sure I'm putting on SPF. Primers with SPF, foundation with SPF, anything I can do just to make sure I am fully covered. This also um, works as like a uh, pore blur. So it is gonna make the skin look a little bit smoother, prime your skin for makeup, keep your makeup on all day. It's got a lot of great benefits to it. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my foundation first and then I'm gonna go in with concealer this time. The foundation I'm using today is the L'Oreal um, Fresh Wear Foundation, and this has an SPF of 25. I really like this foundation. I talk about it pretty often. It's a great, great foundation, period. Um, also, obviously, it's a drugstore, so it's great that the price is so nice. Um, I'm the shade, what shade am I? I say this every time, and it's 460. I'm the shade 460 in this, but it's very lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. Um, it gives pretty good coverage without being like full heavy coverage. And it has a really natural, healthy looking finish. Okay, just looks so pretty and light. So when I apply foundation, my technique is really to always start in the center of the face. If you think about it, the first place that you put your brush is where you're going to get the most product applied, right? Because you go in from your brush and then you go immediately to that area. I want most of my product here in the center of the face because that's where I have the most discoloration or blemishes, sunspots. That's where the sun hits my face, so I tend to have more sunspots, dark pigmentation, all of that. And I need more coverage there. And then I will kind of press this way to get the most coverage and then I will kind of blend and buff out in little circular motions as I get to the perimeter of the face. That's my technique for foundation. Understanding that pressing, whether it is with a foundation, a concealer, um, or with an eyeshadow, uh, pressing is going to get more product applied where buffing and using motions like this, kind of swiping the face is gonna blend and sheer product out. So if I wanted to get a more sheer application from this, I would probably just start right in by swiping, if that makes sense. Look at that, such pretty nice, even coverage and I still have a little bit left. Normally I wouldn't say like, oh, you have to use everything you, you know, you pump out, but because this foundation is so light and buildable, I'm gonna go ahead and just take what I have and kind of press it into the center of the face, maybe around the nose a little bit. Oh, this is such a great foundation, you guys. I think it's pretty good for all skin types. If you have excessively oily skin, maybe not so much, but I think even normal to oily or combination skin, dry skin for sure, just a great foundation. Okay, 
Okay, then I'm gonna go and apply my concealer, and the concealer I'm using today is by e.l.f. It is the Hydrating Camo Concealer, and I have the shade Light Beige. I'm gonna apply a little bit of this just in the inner corner of my eye and slightly underneath the inner corner. I feel like the consistency of this gives me a lot of room to spread it. So we're gonna see if we can use just what we need and nothing more. I'm actually gonna use my 106 brush to go ahead and blend this in as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's a little yellow. It's okay, I think it's gonna work once I get it all blended in. I like the 106 because you can use it for concealer. I'm also gonna use this for cream blush here in a bit. People ask all the time, what's my preference of the 101? Or people ask like, what would I recommend the 101 or the 106? And I always say it's really a matter of preference because they're so different. The 101 is larger in size, so it's gonna cover more space quickly. So if you are someone that likes to apply your foundation really quickly, or you don't have a lot of time, um, that's a great option. If you like to buff and work in circular motions, um, the 106 for sure, because of the shape of it and the size of it, it's just the perfect brush for that. If you like more of a natural sheer application, the 101 is great, but you can still get full coverage from the 101. You just have to press it. Uh, but the 101 is really great for people that kind of like to swipe and blend and sheer product out. Oh, I love this concealer is actually really nice. It looks really natural, really hydrating. I feel like I could have gone a little bit lighter. This one's very yellow, but that is okay. All right. So next I'm going to go ahead and apply my bronzer and I'm excited about this because it's a brand new product. I haven't even opened it yet. It's the Fenty Beauty uh, Cream Bronzer in Butter Biscuit. Um, this came in my Sephora order. I've actually, it's been a week. This arrived last week. I was doing my peel last week, so I couldn't apply it any makeup. So this will be the first time that I actually try this. And this was recommended by my friend Amanda. She's here on YouTube at Lux Mommy. Um, I'll have her channel listed down below, but she um, did a video on all Fenty Beauty products. Products, and she said she loved them all, but she would not stop talking about this. I did dip my finger in there and swipe it, but I haven't actually worn it. So I'm gonna use uh, the 106 brush and I'm just gonna kind of press it in here. We'll see how this pays off. And I'm gonna start back here at the hairline, kind of smile and just press. Okay, this is nice, it's very natural. I think I need to grab a little bit more. I was kind of light-handed the first time because I didn't know how dark it was. Ooh, this is really pretty. I like the color of this. This is really, really nice. And it's, it's really easy to apply. Do you see that? Really natural. All right, I'm gonna kind of swirl it in here and really load it up. And we're gonna go here. Ooh, that is nice, you guys. Very natural. I like the tone of it. It's warm, but it's not too orangey or too red. It's just like that perfect, perfect. Oh, that's gorgeous. I kind of want to load it up. <laughs> I'm gonna load it up, get a little more. I'm gonna put a little bit on the sides of my nose here. And I'm gonna put a little bit in my hairline right here. And I'm gonna put the mirror down for that. Okay, very nice and natural. Nice, I like that. Okay, so next I'm gonna go and apply my blush. And I also have a new product from Fenty Beauty. It is the Cheeks Out um, Freestyle Cream Blush. And I have the shade Petal Poppin'. Again, I haven't used this. I don't think I've even swatched this one yet. Let me see. This was another one that Amanda said she loved. Yeah, okay, I swatched with my finger. It looks a lot brighter. Uh, like when I opened it, I was like, oh, that looks brighter than I thought it would be, but let's try it. I have a feeling that it's gonna be a little bit more forgiving given the way the bronzer paid off. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of just take my 106 and load up the brush. I'm gonna smile, apply it right on the apples. Ooh, okay, that's beautiful. Very nice and light, much more forgiving than it looks to be. It looks really bright in the um, little pot here, but it actually goes on so beautifully. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Wow, that is so pretty. I've kind of been a huge fan of cream blush lately, cream and liquid blush over the last, I'd say six months, a year maybe. It's just so beautiful and so natural and it gives like the, prettiest, lightest glow in the right places. It's so nice. Okay, I like to smile and make my cheeks pop. All right, that is really, really pretty. Okay, I kind of love these two. I feel like these would be great products to wear on the days you don't wanna wear foundation, but you wanna give your skin a little bit of life. These would be great. I love these. I know that was the first time I've tried them, but I love them. Okay, next I'm gonna set the rest of the face with a little bit of powder. And I'm using my, just because I have it here, uh, the Coke and Doe um, Natural Lighting Powder, Natural Finishing Powder. I'm gonna be really careful not to apply too much because I don't, I don't want too much powder, especially since I applied cream, blush, and bronzer. I don't want it to get like kind of chunky, so I'm gonna be real careful. 
So what I've basically done is applied it everywhere that I don't have the cream products. And then I'm gonna just take my brush just because I wanna set it in place, but there's not a lot of powder on this brush because I've already applied it to the rest of the face and I'm just gonna lightly tap over the product. I don't wanna move it around, I don't wanna mess it up, I just lightly wanna tap over it because I am gonna be outside today. Um, it's gonna be a hot one today. I feel like I need to set it slightly, uh, but again, but I don't wanna put too much powder over a cream product. You wanna be real careful when you do that. Okay, next I'm gonna do in my, my brows, I'm gonna go Go ahead and go off camera for this just for the sake of timing. I'm using my go-to products, which is my NYX Precision Brow Pencil and my Gimme Brow Brow Gel. So we're gonna do this and we'll be right back. Next, we're gonna go into eyes, and I'm gonna use the Bare uh, Minerals Gin Nude Palette. This is the uh, neutral shade. It actually looks kind of rosy, but it's not the rose one. I think they have one called Rose, and that one's definitely leans more pink, but you can see that these shades definitely have a little bit of a rosy um, tint to them. Uh, okay, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply the base color kind of all over and I'm just using my BK Beauty 201 brush. Uh, we are currently having our first ever sale actually on BK Beauty brushes for Mother's Day. It actually ends on Mother's Day. Um, a couple of things to know about the sale. We did end up selling out of the 101 foundation brush. Um, I think it was on Sunday or Monday. Anyway, we're sold out of it currently. Um, however, we have a waiting list. If you actually go to the 101 um, product page, the individual product page, there is a little pop-up that will say you can join the waiting list. If you join that list by um, the last day of the promotion on Sunday, 510, then um, you, when we get the foundation brush restocked, which will be in June, you'll get an email and you'll get a special one-time promo code for 20% off anything on the website that includes the 101 foundation brush. So it can either be just the 101 or it could be the full collection with the 101 or it could be the face collection with the 101. So basically, you know, for those of you that want to order something right now that has the 101 and we don't have it in stock, um, but you want to take advantage of the sale, we're going to give you guys a one-time code when we get, we get that restocked. But the only caveat is that you have to be signed up for the waiting list and you have to sign up for it by the end of the sale on May 10th. So if you sign up after that, you're not going to get that 20%. So you want to make sure you do that during the sale. Um, okay, then next I'm going to go in with this shade right here. It's called Native and we are gonna apply that in the crease. And for that, I'm gonna use the um, 202 brush, which is our powder, or, sorry, <laughs> it's our crease brush, but it's a bit more tapered than the 201. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this color on the tip. I'm gonna actually create more of a rounded eye today. So I'm just gonna go kind of back and forth, but I'm really gonna create this rounded shape. If you are trying to kind of tweak the eye shape a bit, this step right here is where you start. So you wanna start with your transition shade. You want to kind of create that shape with your transition shade. And I recommend starting with a lighter color, uh, something like this. You don't wanna to go too dark. You can always add and deepen it up as you go, but to really kind of start to change the shape, start subtle, cause you can always add to it. But if you start too dark and you create, try and create a shape, um, in the eye, it can, there's just more room for error. So just like we talked about with foundation, the first place you put your brush is where you deposit the most color or product. Same thing with eyeshadow. So I want most of the product to be concentrated right here in the outer corner. So I'm gonna go in the outer corner every time and then I'm gonna work my way inward to blend and move that shadow. I don't want it to be too heavy and dark in the inner corner. So if I were to start there every time, that's what would happen. So you really wanna you know, keep in mind the first place you put your brush is where the most of that product is gonna come off. So always start where you want it to be a little darker, where you want a little more coverage, where you want a little more product. All right, okay. Feel like this side's a little bit deeper but that's okay because I'm gonna go back and add one shade to deepen the corner even more. And for that, I'm gonna use this shade right here. It's called Indie and it is the darkest matte shade in the palette. It's like this warm chocolatey color. And I'm gonna grab this 202, we're still gonna use that. And I'm going to apply that right here in the outer corner and just kind of press. Do you notice I'm just pressing? Once I feel like I've got all the product applied, then I'll kind of go back and I'm not really moving my brush 
too, I'm not covering too much space because I wanna concentrate that darkness right here. I'm just moving in little circles. So just moving, basically staying in one place, but moving in little circles will kind of buff out that product. All right. So I did that peel. I'm actually gonna fil film the recap of the peel right after this. I filmed this video. Um, but I've gotta say, you guys, I was really impressed with the results. Even Paul, the last couple of days, every morning, you know, I don't have any makeup on, he's always like, your skin, like he, he can't get over the difference. Uh, it's kind of crazy, <laughs> really a huge difference. That I feel is a skin treatment that I'll definitely do probably twice a year. Okay, that's really pretty. All right, next, I'm gonna take our 208 brush, I'm sorry, our 108 brush, and I'm going to um, just kind of make sure I don't have any fallout down here. Okay, then we're gonna go in and apply our lid color, and for that, I'm actually gonna use the 207 brush. This is our uh, pencil brush. So this is one of my favorite. I feel like everybody needs a good pencil brush in their collection. A pencil brush is great for so many things. Um, I think the thing I always talk about it being great for is applying that dark color on the outer corner because it is so small you can control where you apply it. So if you're not comfortable using a big crease brush for that area, apply it with this first. Just pack it on, pack it on. It can look sloppy and messy and then go back and blend it out. Um, but you can also use this as your eyeshadow brush for really small eyes or really hooded eyes. It's very small, but if you, ha if you don't have a lot of lid space, it's actually kind of perfect. So I'm gonna take this shade right here. It's the lighter of the shimmery shade. It's called Believer, and I'm gonna load this brush up. And I'm going to um, start in the, uh, about, actually we're gonna start here in the center of the lid. We're gonna start in the center, and I'm just gonna kind of press it onto the lid. Now I could use a bigger eyeshadow brush for this, definitely. Um, when you use smaller, more detailed brushes, it just, helps keep that separation of light and dark if that's what you're going for. It's kind of like those subtle little tweaks and changes to your application that make the slightest but impactful difference, if that makes sense. It's just like the, the little tiny details that really make a difference. Okay, so do you see that? Oh, I love this color, it's so pretty. So I'm just packing that right on. So I've ended up taking that all over to the inner corner but I'm pretty much stopping right there. So what I like about this brush versus like a basic eyeshadow brush, its size is smaller, so it really allows you to concentrate that eyeshadow exactly where you want it. Do you ever notice when you use like a dark matte shadow like I did here, and then you use something light and shimmery after? Sometimes you get the colors muddied together, and you lose that depth uh, and that effect of that dark matte shadow, because now you have something light and reflective on top of it, so you lose some of that dimension, right, and that shape. Uh, because light or shimmer reflects light and matte recedes light. So by using a brush like this and really concentrating it right where you want it, you don't have to later go back and add darkness to like fix anything. Does that make sense? All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I love this palette. It's just one of my favorites. I haven't used it in a while, um, but every time I go to it, I'm like, gosh, it's just such a great palette. And I'm taking my time more with this look. This is such an easy everyday palette. I mean, you could literally do your make your eye makeup in a couple of minutes with this, but I'm having fun. I wanna take the time. Um, and I'm actually gonna take that same shade and I'm gonna bring it right down here in the inner corner a little bit. It's pretty pink, so I don't wanna build it too much because I wanna keep it light. Okay, then next I'm gonna go in and we are gonna create kind of like a smoky lower lash line. And for that, I'm actually gonna use the same brush because I realized I don't have our 204 brush. Our 204 brush um, is a little tighter so you get a little bit more compact eyeliner. Um, but I'm gonna start with the shade here. This is the shade we did in the crease. I'm gonna start with that and then I'm gonna go back and add um, the darker one too. But I wanna start with something light. So I'm just gonna kind of smoke out that lower lash line. So pretty, I'm really loving my makeup. I haven't done my makeup like this in a good week. When I did that peel, I was able to do my makeup the very next day. That's actually when I filmed my favorites video. Um, but then come Tuesday, which was the next day, it was my skin was peeling. It was peeling for a few days. So I didn't put any makeup on all week. All right, so kind of smoked that out. And then next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the darkest um, shade and I'm gonna go in with the um, 208 brush, which is our tiny little wing liner brush. And I'm going to load that brush up with the darkest shade and we're just gonna kind of run it real close to the lash line. I want it a little darker there in the outer corner, but I don't wanna use the 207 because it's a you know it's obviously a lot bigger than this brush. And I really wanna concentrate this darkness just at the lash line. I don't want it to get too dark or too heavy down there. 
perfect. So nice. Okay, then next I'm gonna do the same thing but on the upper lash line and we're just gonna kind of create a little bit of darkness here. This shade is dark, but it's not dark enough to give like a, a real strong winged liner or anything. It's just gonna give a little bit of fullness at the lash base. Um, I'm gonna put on false lashes, so I'm kind of just doing this so that it kind of conceals the lash band once I glue it. I find that when you have some sort of eyeliner on, false lash strips just look and blend a little better. It's a little more obvious when you don't have anything down there. So we are into May. Today's actually Cinco de Mayo. It's May 5th. And I have to say, you guys, I'm feeling good. I feel like I feel like I have processed a lot, like all of us have since this all started. But my spirits are really, really good right now. Um, so that's good. Next, I'm going to apply my lashes. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera or maybe speed through this um, just for time's sake because this will take like five minutes of the video. So uh, just to let you guys know, the uh, lashes that I'm using are the Ardell um, Wispies. These were featured in my favorites video. I love these lashes. Anytime that I don't have lash extensions, these are my go-to lashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these. And I, and I get a good, probably four uses out of each pair. So, you know, it's great. I've tried buying really expensive lashes. Um, and they're, some of them are great, but I just find that this is such a great style for my eye shape. And I think this pack of five is like 12 bucks. So I'm like, why not? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put these on and I'll be right back. All right, we are back. I have to say, I love these lashes. They are just, they just make the whole look. I love it. Um, okay, so next I'm gonna apply my lipstick. I'm gonna skip lip liner today just because I don't have a good one in front of me. I'm using uh, Sonic Truth by Marc Jacobs. I really love this lipstick. It's um, a really good kind of true, like, pinky rosy nude. It's so pretty, highly pigmented, has a nice texture to it. I feel like you only really need one swipe. Maybe two. <laughs> um, it's just really, really nice. It kind of gives you that muted lip, but with some color. So it gives you that muted lip without looking like totally washed out. I'm gonna top a little bit of gloss on top and I'm using the um, Chanel uh, Rouge Cocoa Gloss in 722 is the number. This is such a nice gloss. I think this might be the only Chanel gloss I've owned before, and I love it. I love the um, formula. I love the wand too. It's like flexible, but it's firm. It's hard to explain. It's really, really nice. And this is the finished look, you guys. I really love the way that it turned out. It's glam, it's neutral, it's wearable. Um, I feel like if you took off the lashes and just did mascara, it would take it down quite a bit. So if you feel like it's a little too glam for your liking, I think without lashes, you would kind of land where you want it to be. If you also wanted to lighten it a bit, you could skip the darkest shadow that I put in the outer corner and just use that first transition shade and the lid color. And it would be this look, but just toned down a bit. So really, adding that outer um, darkness in the outer corner and then adding the false lashes just to take it up quite a bit. But I have to say, I love it. I'm looking at the monitor. I always, I'm like in such a bad habit of looking at this thing. I need to get a smaller monitor so it's not so distracting, but um, yeah, I love it. I feel pretty. I really love this look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll have all the products uh, linked in the description box below as well as the information on the BK Beauty sale. Um, it's site-wide. It's 20% off. Some bundles are actually about 30% off when you account for the already discounted price on the bundle. So it's a really great sale. We've never had one like this before. Um, and it goes until Sunday, um, Mother's Day. Obviously we can't guarantee it'll ship to you by Mother's Day if you order it on Sunday or Saturday. But uh, if you want to take advantage of the, the sale, all the information will be down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys. Bye.